curve. All right, cool. So we're in Genesis 48, 49, 50. What's up, Facebook? Oh, you can do that? Have <laughs> 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 uh, that's funny. Yeah. And uh, oh, yeah, anybody joining us? Cool. Oh, nobody. Oh, there you're going. Cool. 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 Up there. That's good. Um. Yeah. We'll just uh, we'll go ahead and start. On uh, we're in Genesis 48. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Did you want to start on there? Oh, wait, we have some roles. So we already picked out all the roles except um, we need somebody to be the pharaoh. It's like one line. Uh, Nathan or Bryce, either of you guys want to be the pharaoh tonight? Sure, I'll, I'll do uh, I'll do the Sweet. And then somebody's got to be the Canaanites. <laughs> Grace, that leaves you. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like me? I'm used to being God, but I'll be a Canaanite. I know, I was going to say, is there a God? Is there a God? Can you be the voice of God tonight? No. It's just every time he speaks, it's the voice of God. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter at this yeah. point. And then I'll have you down in the very last chapter. So you're, you're going to be, Darren, you signed up for Jacob slash Israel for 48, 49, but in 50. Um, is that okay if you do the brothers? Just a couple short lines. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And then, uh, again, we can split up the reading. You have the brunt of it tonight, but okay. Shall we? Oh. I don't even know who's talking here when it says sometime later Joseph was told. Thank you. I know, but who says your father is ill? Your father is ill. So he took his two sons, Man Manasseh and Ephraim, along with him when Jacob was told. Your son Joseph has come to you. Israel rallied his strength and sat up on the bed. Jacob said to Joseph, <clears throat> God Almighty, appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan, and there he blessed me and said to me, I'm going to make you fruitful and will increase your numbers. I will make you a community of peoples, and I will give this land as an everlasting possession to your descendants after you. Now then, your two sons born to you in Egypt before I came to you here will be reckoned as mine. Ephraim and Manasseh, will be mine, just as Reuben and Simeon are mine. Any children born to you after them will be yours. In the territory they inherit, they will be reckoned under the names of their brothers. As I, have as I was returning from Padan, to my sorrow, Rachel died in the land of Canaan while we were still on the way, a little distance from Ephrath. So I buried her there beside the road to Ephrath. That is Bethlehem. When Israel saw the sons of Joseph, he asked, Who are these? They are the sons of they are the sons God. Oh, this one. Who is that? They are the sons God has given me here. Joseph said to his father. Then Israel said, Bring them to me so I may bless them. Now Israel's eyes were failing because of old age, and he could hardly see. So Joseph brought his sons close to him, and his father kissed them and embraced them. Israel said to Joseph, I never expected to see your face again, and now God has allowed me to see your children too. Then Joseph removed them from Israel's knees and bowed down with his face to the ground. And Joseph took both of them, both of them, Ephraim on his right toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh. Manasseh on his left foot, Israel's right hand, and brought them close to him. <laughs> but Israel reached out his right hand and put it on Ephraim's head, though he was the younger. And crossing his arms, he put his left hand on Manasseh's head, even though Manasseh was the firstborn. Then he blessed Joseph and said, May the God before whom my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, walked, the God who has been my shepherd, 
all my life to this day. The angel who has delivered me from all harm, may he bless these boys. May they be called by my name and the names of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and may they increase greatly upon the earth. When Joseph saw his father placing his right hand on Ephraim's head, he was displeased. So he took hold of his father's hand to move it from Ephraim's head, Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. Joseph said to him, No, my father, this one is your firstborn. This one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He too will become a people, and he too will become great. Nevertheless, his younger brother will be greater than he, and his descendants will become a group of nations. He blessed them that day and said, In your name will Israel pronounce this blessing. May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. So he put Ephraim ahead of Manasseh. Yeah. Manasseh. Yeah, well, everybody says Manasseh, but <laughs> the people who say it, we all said it wrong. Aren't aren't Hebrew, so the Hebrews might say it might say it Manasseh. Manasseh. Mm -hmm. Manasseh. Yeah. Anyway, then Israel said to Joseph, "I'm about to die, but God will be with you and take you back to the land of your fathers. And to you, as one who is over your brothers, I give the right of land." I took from the Amorites with my sword and my bow. Then Jacob called for his sons and said, Oh, oh wait. Um, 2022. 20, and there's a little note on 22 where I think it's a better translation. Uh, when they put a footnote, when it could be one or the other, it says that, it says, or, and to you I give one person portion more than to your brothers. Um, and that, that I think is a better translation. I give to you this ridge of land because it kind of doesn't specify what the ridge of land is, if it's more for, fertile or something, but it doesn't make sense. That's happened all throughout our past readings in Genesis. Like I'll give you this, but you know, Joseph, you know, I'll, I'll give him a coat of collars, you know, cause he's doing good. And, and um, you know, I'm gonna, um, you know, and then, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob uh, Joseph gave his little brother, Benjamin, I think it was, an extra portion of food, you know, and they're all sitting around the table. So you know, I think that that translation is a little better. But. Anyway, so all right, I cut you off. We were on 49.1. No, it's fine. It's a good translation. Thank you. Uh, then Jacob called for his sons and said, Gather around so I can tell you what will happen to you in days to come. Assemble and listen, sons of Jacob. Listen to your father, Israel. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, the first sign of my strength. Excelling in honor, excelling in power, turbulent as the waters, you will no longer excel. For you went up onto your father's bed, onto my couch, and defiled it. <clears throat> Simeon and Levi are brothers. Their swords are weapons of violence. Let me not enter their council. Let me not join their assembly. For they have killed men in their anger and hamstrung oxen as they pleased. Cursed be their anger, so fierce, and their fury, so cruel. I will scatter them in Jacob and disperse them in Israel. <clears throat> Judah, your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons will bow down to you. You are a lion's cub, O Judah. You return from the prey, my son. Like a lion, he crouches and lies down. Like a lioness, who dares to rouse him? <laughs> the scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he comes to whom it belongs, and the obedience of the nations is his. He will tether his donkey to a vine, his colt to the choicest branch. He will wash his garments in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes will be darker than wine, his teeth whiter than milk. Zebulun will live by the seashore and become a haven for ships. His border will extend toward Sidon. Issachar, Issachar is a raw-boned donkey lying down between two saddlebags. When he sees how good 
is his resting place and how pleasant is his land. He'll bend his shoulder to the burden and submit to forced labor. Dan will provide justice for his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan will be a serpent by the roadside, a viper along the path that bites the horse's heels so that its riders tumbles backward. I look for your deliverance, O Lord. Dad will be attacked by a band of raiders, but he will attack them at their heels. Asher's food will be rich. He will provide delicacies fit for a king. Naphtali is a doe set tree that bears beautiful fawns. Joseph is a fruitful vine, a fruitful vine near a spring, whose branches climb over a wall. With bitterness, archers attacked him. They shot at him with hostility, but his bow remained steady. His strong arms stayed limber because of the hand of the mighty one of Jacob, because of the shepherd, the rock of Israel, because of your father's God who helps you, because of the almighty who blesses you with blessings of the heavens above. Blessings of the deep that lies below. Blessings of the breast and womb. Your father's blessings are greater than the blessings of the ancient mountains, than the bounty of the, of the age-old hills. Let all these rest on the head of Joseph, on the brow of the prince among his brothers. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning he devours the prey. In the evening he divides the plunder. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is what their father said to them when he blessed them, giving each the blessing appropriate to him. Then he gave them these instructions. I oh. <clears throat> am about to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave in the field of Ephron the Hittite, the cave in the field of Machpelah near Mamre and Canaan, which Abraham bought as a burial place from Ephron the Hittite along with the field. There Abraham and his wife Sarah were, were buried. There Isaac and his wife Rebekah were buried. And there I buried Leah. Leah. The field and the cave in it were bought from the Hittites. When Jacob had finished giving instructions to his sons, he drew his feet up into the bed, breathed his last, and was gathered to his people. Joseph threw himself upon his father and wept over him and kissed him. Then Joseph directed the physicians in his service to embalm his father, Israel. So the physicians embalmed him, taking a full 40 days, for that was the time required for embalming. What's embalming? It's, um, I forget what it is. It's, um, I, I don't know. I forget. Bryce, do you know what embalming is? Embalming? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's this standard thing. So people who are doing burial rather than uh, cremation. Cremation. Yeah, so because there's like embalming fluid, it's like oil, and they'll like cover the body. Yeah, basically, oil. that's well, they do that. They prepare the body so that it will, it can maintain the body if it's in shape, to the period of time where it's laid to rest. Oh, okay, yeah, so it doesn't decompose while they're carrying and burying. Oh, okay. I should have asked after I was in reading, sorry. No, that's a good question. And the Egyptians mourned for him 70 days. When the days of mourning had passed, Joseph said to Pharaoh's court, um, If I have found favor in your eyes, speak to Pharaoh for me. Tell him, my father made me swear an oath and said I'm about to die. Bury me in the tomb I dug for myself in the land of Canaan. Now let me go up and bury my father, and then I will return. Pharaoh said, Go up and bury your father as he made you swear to do. So Joseph went up to bury his father. All Pharaoh's officials accompanied him, the dignitaries of his court and all the dignitaries of Egypt, besides all the members of Joseph's household and his brothers and those belonging to his father's household. Only their children and their flocks and herds were left in Goshen. Chariots and horsemen also went up with him. It was a very large company. When they reached the threshing floor at, of Atad near the Jordan, they lamented loudly and bitterly, and there Joseph observed a seven-day period of mourning for his father. 
when the Canaanites who lived there saw the morning at the threshing floor of Atad, they said. Yeah. The, I can read it. The Egyptians are holding a solemn ceremony of mourning. That is why that place near the Jordan is called Abel Mizraim. So, Which means mourning of the Egyptians. Oh, yeah, it says in my too. Mm -hmm. So Jacob's sons did as he had commanded them. They carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave in the field of Machpelah mm -hmm. near Mamre, which Abraham had bought as a burial place from Ephron the Hittite, along with the field. After burying his father, Joseph returned to Egypt together with his brothers and all the others who had gone with him to bury his father. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It's me, right? Hmm? What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. Is that so me? Yeah, yeah. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are, um, we are your slaves, he said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I'll provide for you and your children. And he, reass oh. and he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Joseph stayed in Egypt along with his Along with all his father's family, he lived 110 years and saw the third generation of Ephraim's children. Also, the children of Machir, son of Manasseh, were placed at birth on Joseph's knees. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die, but God will surely come to your aid and take you up out of this land, the land he promised an oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Joseph made the sons of Israel swear an oath and said, God. I think that's the brothers. Oh. God will surely come to your aid. And then you must bury, or you must carry oh. my bones up from this place. Oh, sorry. No, no, that, that was me. The brothers wouldn't tell them. Yeah, okay. So, so God will surely come to your aid. Then you must carry my bones up from this place. So Joseph died at the age of 110, and after they embalmed him, he was placed in a coffin in Egypt. Cool. Now we're on to Exodus. Hey, Darren. Okay. <laughs> You're up. Please would like to see if anybody had any comments. Yeah, it looks like you got so. No, it just says they all joined. Leo joined. Will joined. So bad, Mark. So, uh, uh, yeah, any questions, comments, concerns, complaints? <laughs> oh, one thing. I, uh, I was just looking at some of my notes that I had made from uh, uh, my readings in, in Jeremiah. Um, in, in Jeremiah 31, uh, I'm pretty sure um, that is stated in the Bible, but I'm pretty sure that, that, that when Jeremiah is talking about Ephraim, or Ephraim, who is uh, Joseph's son. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, uh, so Jeremiah 31 18. I have surely heard that Ephraim's moaning. He disciplined, he disciplined me like an unruly cat, and I have been his discipline. Restore me, and I will return, because you are the Lord my rock. After I strayed, I repented. After I came to understand, I beat my breath. I was ashamed and humiliated, because I bore the disgrace of my youth. And then that answers him is not your friend, my dear son, when we tell him my delight. But I often speak against him, I still remember. 
number one. Hmm. And uh, that's kind of that's kind of interesting. Um, and I'm, I'm reading it here also Jeremiah 31. Their their history, you know, Israel's history and the people of Israel and their stories were obviously very important to their culture. Um, yeah. Yeah, we do the we do the same thing in part when our you know when our grand great grandparents did a um, when they do something weird or, or funny and we remember it it's like it's much more personal I, I think you have a good point in that that um, and also that God kept this promise about it was Manasseh who was repenting in Jeremiah I was actually uh, Ephraim, okay. So yeah, God God kept them true to him. Yeah. And we're, yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, and there is a sort of personalization where when we're learning about this, we don't these aren't our grandparents. Um, but but they become they become our grandparents as fathers of faith as we take up the faith of Christ and yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and we we use their example. That's good. Jeremiah, man, I miss Jeremiah. That's a good book. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have any other comments? Darren. No, nothing yet. Okay. Well, your shoulders are getting broader. Tell you to physical work. <laughs> they also like cracking. That all the art. Do you have any comments? Uh, no. Um, that was a good. That was a good uh, blessing. Mm. Um, <laughs> All his sons. Rice is funny. That's so funny. <laughs> you, do you want to share with us the chuckles? Well, some of it seemed like a blessing anyway. Some of it seemed like okay. Yeah. Um, there was there was one thing I'm thinking like. What is this blessing stuff? This is, it's like magic, magic words. I'm going to speak magic over you, and suddenly you will be blessed. And uh, I was like, when I bless somebody, like when they sneeze or something, I don't think that um, it, I don't feel power in that. But uh, but uh, that that's when I realized, like it's like it's not so much as may God bless you and keep you, good luck go your way, but it's more like. When a guy asks for a a girl's hand in marriage, when you when you get somebody's blessings, it means that you get their acceptance, and and they're gonna when when they die, they're going to leave their inheritance to you. They're gonna support you in every way, and it basically just encourages you. And uh, and in some way, I think there's a spiritual blessing. You know, God says, "Whom whom you bless will be blessed; whom you curse, you will be cursed." And um, and and all these blessings were true, but I forget that it's a, a real emotional thing. Like the kids, they want every kid wants to be accepted by their parents, and that's what receiving a blessing is. And God, you know, passes on the blessings. You know, He gave the spirit of Elijah to Elisha. But uh, it did seem, yeah, kind of magical. Yeah, it does have some. I think that uh, I mean, as a, as a father sees his children grow up and he sees their tendencies, I think he kind of uh, kind of speaks in, in into that, kind of into their 
their direction, their gifting, or you know, kind of their purpose. Uh, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody speaks into you deeper than your own parents. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Raquel's got kids growing up, and they're about to enter the workforce, and like. Oh, we can see like it's in a <laughs> vapor. Life is but a vapor. No, stop. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, but, but I can already tell one girl writes all the time. The other guy is very analytical, and he'll joke around, but he likes to get no. But this this is the way things are, and then I, I will explain it. So he's very like I can see him being a teacher or something very very easily. Yeah, and so but you know as people who help. <laughs> raise kids you know you're like you you speak into your kids life like when you bless them in that area you're going to help them become a teacher you're going to help them become a writer and yeah it's uh the no, yeah there's a there's a it is really special to be blessed by your 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 parents and, you know. yeah that's what i felt like he was speaking a word over them like you know maybe god was Bring it on to tell them, but what's up with the bad stuff though? Like, gags would be attacked by a band of raiders, yeah. <laughs> um, but then he turns around and attacks her. He looks like I guess there's, there's good in there, but it's 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 in the same way. Like, why is there some of them that is blessing and others but, it sounds like bad? Yeah, and it's in the same way when my dad, uh, my dad struggled with anger. He knows that I struggled with anger because he struggled with anger too, and it, it kind of passed down generation. And Satan definitely works that way. Um, uh, you know, he sees your genetic weaknesses and your propensity to. Uh, um, we're both really athletic, and so for that, we have a nature to. Well, when there's an obstacle, you power over it. You build up your power, and you hurdle the obstacle. It's a physical thing. And it's an emotional thing too. You charge yourself up emotionally to overcome something. And uh, my dad and I, we can live on adrenaline, but because of that, we can also be prone to anger because anger brings a lot of endurance. So we have a high capacity for anger. We have a high capacity for stress. Um, and But the bad part of that is that Satan knows that. And so he can use that anger and stress. Um, he can use that ability to withstand great amounts of um, um that athleticism can can be used in a bad way you know powerful people satan can wield so my dad was like every time you get really angry you're just di you're just making things worse for yourself you know you're digging a hole so that that was that was like his rebuke to me it was like um of course of course jacob doesn't want his sons to be this way but he's like careful um you know dude don't and you may not enter my council you know they're saying be humble um you've killed me in your anger um cursed be your anger it's so fierce and your fury is so cool you know uh, there, it's almost as if he's saying overcome that you, um, right yeah some some uh some strict strong words of, of, of discipline yeah 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 it's not yeah it's you know when you first look at it it's like is he cursing this kid <laughs> yeah. okay that makes more sense yeah like uh your and your dad has done that to you too he didn't mean it as a curse as, you know as a rebuke but, yeah.
chapter 11, mm. the chapter that's uh, titled By Faith, Yeah, and he refers to <clears throat> Joseph <clears throat> and Jacob. So for Jacob, in Hebrews 11, it says, By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, <clears throat> blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on the top of his staff. I'm kind of like wondering... Uh, so, like, was it by faith? Because he was about to die. I'm kind of like wondering, like, how was it by faith, or how was that an act of faith? What he was doing. So, wait, read that passage again. Hebrews eleven. Yeah. Thanks. Hebrews eleven, verse um, twenty-one. Okay. And by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons, and worshipped as he leaned on the top of his staff. So I don't like. I mean, he was kind of like prophesying, right? Because he was telling them what they were going to do, and he believed in all that. You know, he was he was also mentioning about how they are going to get that land that God promised. So yeah. was that the faith right there? Because he, yeah. still, he still believed? Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah. yeah. And then right after that, Joseph, when... By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from... Egypt and gave instructions about his bones. Yeah, it's it's kind of like, you know, when we when we pass away, our kids they they carry the call, and so we have to have faith that they will complete that which we start that which God started mm -hmm. in us. There's also an interesting point. I, I thought he was saying something. Yeah, go ahead, Brian. Well, there is a point. I don't know if I'm going to trust my phone. I don't know if I'm going to trust my phone. I don't know if I'm going to trust my phone. I don't know if I'm going to trust my phone. I don't know if I'm going to trust my phone. Well, that is profound. Thank you. Sharing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, if you think of it, just let us know. Do you, do you have any yeah. other? I think so. Did Jake? Did Jacob really tell Joseph to forgive his brothers? I don't remember reading that. No, no, that's, they, that's they right. I was that. like, yeah, let's let's oh, read okay. that. I re really like that. <laughs> No. So you just said it so that they okay. would. Oh. Okay. I remember this now. Ah. It was the. Uh, <laughs> Because they were all they were living in Egypt, mm -hmm. um, but the promise was Canaan, and so he, the promise was Joseph. Yeah, all about three months. Well, hold on, hold on a sec. It, it did cut out. There is something between our connection and yours. Can you say that one more time? The last two sentences.
down and you're not holding up the elastic so long that then you guys are going to get ready to go. Ah, that's what I that is. You have the idea that service is, I think he had the idea that service of that was over and everybody would move back. He didn't realize that they were going to be there a little longer. Yeah. Like 400 years longer. Yeah. 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 And that that is very interesting. Um, yeah, and another thing I noticed is that as soon as Joseph dies, the, the story ends. And so, so we can basically conclude Genesis now. Um, well, first of all, so we're studying the Torah. That's what. Uh, Hebrews called the first five books, and they're all written by Moses, and they're the foundation of the old rest of the Old Testament, which they call the Tanakh. Uh, but notice that, um, and our professor made us do this, um, rightfully so, you know, my work. But um, once you read, once we read a book, we can like write an outline for it. And she goes, the better you know a book, the shorter your outline is, like the less detailed it is of okay. it. And so basically I wrote an outline. I think I have it on my computer. But, but anyway, from Genesis 1 through 11, God was talking about the world. And the world was flooded, and then Noah came, and then the world was repopulated, and I created the world, and all these things about their generalities. And then uh, all these nations were coming up in the Tower of Babel, and once he created, once once the world was split into different nations, he essentially s switched narrative to where he's like, okay, I'm going to take a nation. I'm going to take one of these, and and I'm going to make them my example. And, and then so from then on, we have God's the entire the entire narrative is riding through the life of Abraham, and then it's riding through the life of Isaac, and then riding through Jacob, and then it's it's no coincidence that it rides through Joseph, and then as soon as Joseph dies. Then the narrative ends. So it's kind of like God is saying, I, I, I want uh, people who are, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, contact? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, anyway, it's interesting that God is, is, he's still getting more personal. He's like, I want a person. I don't want a group of people. I'm going to get really personal. I want, I want to speak to the whole world through one person. And he does it in the same way through us. And, you know, when we receive Christ and he continues to use us um, and he puts his spirit in us directly and he lives inside of us. And which is kind of what the flowing stream of water is. Um, but basically, 1 through 11, it's kind of the history of the world. And then 12 through like 30 is Abraham, 30, 35 is Isaac, and 35 through 42 is Jacob and then Joseph's 42 to the end. And so, anyway, that's, we could effectively sum up this chapter. It's just Genesis. And uh, on your point, Bryce, um, they, they did do themselves bad. The brothers were bad and they, they basically went into exile and they went into uh, Egyptian rule because Almost the entire book of Exodus is about getting out from underneath Egyptian rule, which they never were, God never intended that in the first place. Anyway, that's all I got. We can go to bed now. <laughs> you were going to explain this part. This part? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll reread that part. I do like that. It's my favorite. Because their brothers are so conniving, but even after all they've done, they're still conniving. And so it goes, the brothers saw that their father was dead. I had to see him huddling down together. And they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for the wrongs that we did to him? And the other guy's like, yeah, we can do that. So they sent word to Joseph saying, <clears throat> Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to celebrate <laughs> to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and wrongs they com committed in treating you so badly. Um, now please forgive the sins of your servant uh, of the God your father. 
And they're, up, they're all sitting there like, did he buy it? <laughs> no, yeah, no. And their message called to him, Joseph wept. He wept, so the brother's like, sweet. He got out of his high five, rose. And uh, then they came down to him and said, we are your slaves. And all scared and sobby. Sobby bros. <laughs> I think he had already forgiven them, though. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. he wouldn't have revealed himself and did all that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. So they're dumb for thinking that he was going to do them wrong. They're, st they're still conniving. <laughs> still trying to cheat around the criminal thinking, you know. So what is conniving? Conniving, like, uh, no, I, I, I always do, like, can I just being shrewd might be a bad definition of it, but like being <laughs> conniving, like trying to cut corners. Ah, yeah, there's still like in criminal mentality, but but again, here forgiveness releases it doesn't relieve the guilty party, it relieves you mm -hmm. from the all the hate and anger. Um, you, you release it, you for you forgive, you don't let people take advantage of you again. But that's so that your your heart can heal, and you just forgive everybody. And and here, the kid Joseph, he was continuing to have a good character, and the other guys, and he was still a little to learn. But then again, that's why his father rebuked three three of the twelve of them. But um, but here, and Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph being blessed because he was good. He had good morals. Mm. True that. No one's heard. Uh, I just heard a, um, a commentary where he goes. Uh, I guess we can pray and close here, but uh, he goes. We're in a very powerful chess match between um, between God and Satan, and Satan can't win. So every time Satan makes a move, God makes a move through his own people. And every time something bad comes into our life, something better comes about. You know, every time there's a giant mass shooting in, in, in Vegas and Texas and things like that, yeah, a couple lives were lost. Good people died. Satan Satan used bad people to kill good people. You know, that's there's a spiritual order going. But all the good that comes out afterwards, it, it just overflows with goodness. And so Satan makes a move and God makes a more powerful move. And, and and we are really are um, in a place where God is is going to beat the devil, and um, while we're caught, kind of caught in the middle, and we're, we're like, really, is that going to happen? You know, and there's always some lack of faith in, but um, it's it's really true. You know, the brothers tried to kill Joseph, and then God took Joseph out of it and made, made him bigger and stronger. Now the brothers serve him, and, and um, so God is in control, but Satan meddles. And, uh, Anyway, I'll close this unless anybody has any more comments. Yeah. You do? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You got to stop me from talking. <laughs> I've got to. We thank you. Uh, uh, oh, Bryce, Nathan, did you guys have any more comments? No. Okay. God, we thank you for. Um, no, that's. <laughs> we thank you for the we thank you for the evening. Uh, we thank you for your word um, and uh, for everybody joining us on Facebook Live. God, uh, we thank you just uh, how you guide your people and how good does overcome. Good always wins, and, and we can trust in your goodness. And we can trust in each other. And we can trust in in good people, and we can have faith in humanity. God, um, we know that the Satan might meddle, but you are you're still in control. And he might gain a little ground, but again, what Satan means and what others mean for bad, we get stronger and we, we use it, you use it for good. And so um, I pray that you would just lift up all the heart hurts of everybody listening, God, um, and that um, you would just continue to gain ground in our lives as we lose faith, we give up hope, and then we regain hope and go, oh, you were there all along. And um, just uh, lead us through that uh 
do the battle of life, God, and just, um, uh, again, heal our hearts and heal the wounds of the past, oh God, and um, uh, lead us, like you say in Psalm 23, lead us beside still waters and green pastures. Um, lead us into quietness for your name's sake. Uh, may our cups of blessing overflow with your joy and with your oil and through through your son's blood and and through um, all the ways that you God and through your spirit and uh, through drawing us to you and through church and through more of your scripture and worship and, and everything that you have set out for us to um, get closer to you with God. I um, pray that you be with us all. You be near us. Um, please keep harm far, far away from us. Keep, please keep us clean and close to you. And God, uh, um, like it, it says in your word, um, may we look forward to dwelling in your house forevermore. And that we know that all the good things will come, God. And um, the now and not yet. I pray that you would increase our faith like these patriarchs of faith as we're adopted in sonship through your son. And uh, please just uh, keep us reminding of, of, of keeping faith and keeping hope when things are hard. In your name, amen. Yeah. Please give us a good Bible thing next couple weeks. It's a Sunday thing, it's your turn. Mm -hmm. And then it'll be your turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someday.